Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Cars. Welcome to the Japan Track Guide and Setup video. So we resume where we left off in the early parts of the season. Japan, a very beautiful track in real life as well. Uh, but in this game, in F124, it's a little bit of a challenge to drive, especially with how the curves behave in sector one. They are very challenging, but once you nail it, it's so rewarding to drive. But then again, you know, uh, it's subjective. Everyone loves a different way. Uh, very quickly, thank you to all channel members, patrons, and also subscribers in YouTube uh, for bringing us where we are. Now let's get into the track guide in Japan. To start off your lap, I'm good, just, gonna, just gonna take uh, a normal racing line here. I don't want to take a too wide line anyway. Uh, but you can do that as well. You probably gain a little bit more time down the straight. So just taking as much curb as possible uh, to minimize the track distance and get a better exit. Let the car run wide to start your hot lap. And then DRS open. Keep your car straight. You don't need to beef or anything. Uh, the delta time you're seeing is against a low downforce setup. So I'm using a high downforce one here. And uh, after this exit road, this is your turning in point. At this point, you're still going to be flat, right? And uh, after this curb on the right-hand side ends, that's where you want to start to brake. Brake straight initially, and then trail brake as you're turning into the turn two here. Fourth gear or fifth gear, whichever you prefer. Use all the exit curb. And then now, this is where it starts to get tricky, right? Uh, all these curbs here, if you nail it correctly, you gain time. So just skim it a little bit. Uh, if you do it correctly, then you can gain some time on this entry on this next right-hander. Try to keep it flat. Uh, you can possibly go almost flat, about 70-80% throttle. And again, now this next left-hander, um, as soon as you reach this part of the track, around the middle of it, you just maybe need a downshift to fifth gear or lift a little bit and keep a very high amount of throttle to maintain a high momentum through this S section. Now the next right-hander, as you'll see shortly, again, initially you're tight on the entry. Again, you wanna keep some amount of throttle all the way. No need to lift completely, just about make sure 40, 50% throttle all the time. Stay tight and then again, stay tight, but avoid the curbs. Bring the car over to the left-hand side after this Dunlop curb. And this is the end of sector one. And right around 75 meter mark is where you want to start to turn in. And you don't want to turn too late either, right? And you can be flat here, completely flat on this next right hander here. Cut a lot of it. And on the exit, once the car is straightened out, as soon as it's straight, that's where you can start to brake down to fourth gear or third gear, whichever you prefer. And then, yeah, Dagna 2. Uh, be careful not to take too much of the curb. It unsettles the car quite easily. On the exit, make sure your car is straight. But you'll see shortly as you see the full speed replay. Uh, you know, I lost the back end a little bit here. Uh, and that's probably costing me half ten. Keep the car straight. You should expect the car to be loose around there. And now into the hairpin, a prime overtaking spot as well in this track. Uh, after this uh, orange mark on the right or that tall advertisement board, the standing one on the left, that's your braking reference. And go down to third gear or second gear, tuck the car in. There's a little bit of camber to help the car turn in. I held on to the brakes a little too much here, which is why I lost a little bit of momentum in the mid corner, uh, despite using a higher downfall setup. So, you know, that's definitely a skill issue there. <laughs> and now on the exit, Keep it tight to the right hand side, this will gain you a little bit more time, at least half a time easily. But I'm still losing time because I'm using a high down for setup, obviously. After the 50 meter mark here, that's your turning in point, and you need to apply very little amount of brakes, just maybe 20-30%, you know, and downshift to 6 gear, and take quite a bit of the curb, but not more than half, right? If you touch the grass, that's where it starts to feel a little bit unsettled. Taking a little bit of the curb helps the car to rotate. And as soon as your car is straightened out on the exit of spoon one, and now on the second part of spoon curve, the next left-hander, right around here, you want to downshift to fifth gear or fourth gear. 
and uh, uh, if I if I can get it, get the replay right, there you go. Uh, and then as soon as you are near the curb already, near the curb zone already, accelerate as soon as possible. The sooner you accelerate, the more momentum you carry on the exit. Let the car run wide, carry all the momentum down into 130R, and we're gonna lose easily three tenths here because of the very high down for setup that we're using. And I'm keeping in 7k because I'm not gaining time in 8. And now heading into the final chicane, this is going to make or break your lap time. Break at the 100 meter board. Break in a straight line, the track turns away from you uh, on this braking zone. So be careful not to be too tight on the left hand side initially. Leave a bit of space here and take a lot of the entry curb here. And I think on this run, I got away with it. So lucky to not invalidate this. And I take a lot of the in inside curb here on the right that should open up the next left hander and in contrast to uh, the starting of the lap I'm this time I'm taking a little bit less either way can work for you try or whichever is comfortable as long as you get a clean exit and power out of it as soon as possible you can ride the curb on the exit and stick to the right hand side to minimize track distance that should gain you a few more tenths a uh, few more tenths, few more thousands down to the finish line and that is a setup not a setup <laughs> excuse me but that is a track guide around japan and now we will head into the setup and very quickly if you would love to check out other setups make sure to check the description and also in the top right for the playlist now let's check this setup real quick for japan we have 50 42 wings very high downforce around here uh, surprisingly works well it's um, it's one of the tracks where uh, you want to use more downforce than you probably ex expected you can use a little bit lower front wing maybe two or three clicks lower to give you more stability i like the front to be very pointy on entry and then i love to control it from there on um, different drivers different preference so you want more understeer or oversteer it's up to you so i prefer a little bit more oversteer but not too much and then probably for the race you can reduce it even more maybe uh, 40 or 38 rear wing and then 48 front wing something like that moving on to the transmission 90 on throttle so a little bit lower for the high speed corners especially in the s section in sector one uh, the rest of the track 90 or 100 works nicely 10 percent off throttle just to allow the car to rotate but you can add on to 20 or 30 if you need stability and 100 percent engine braking is the way to go stops the car much faster regen more ers suspension geometry all minimum you can add a little bit of rear toe in maybe 0 0.05 or 0 0.10 to get a little bit more stability under braking and coming out of slow corners and now we move on to suspension which uh, did quite a bit of experimenting still not 100 percent sure if this is the fastest way but you know it felt way better than the default 41 front suspension because the curbs are really deadly around here so 31 on the front actually felt much better the lower i went the better it felt but uh, there's a point where you go too low and you start losing lap time and performance so i think 31 was just around the sweet spot for me along with the right head adjustment i went from 25 to 28 so it gave me about the same performance anyway but a little bit more drivability on the curbs similar story for the rear suspension uh, usually i start off with one on the rear suspension but uh, for some reason it, it didn't work right uh, because there's a lot of high speed corners here the car turns very quickly and it needs to be stable aerodynamically so i stiffened the rear suspension a little bit and raised the rear right height to 68 um, i don't know why but it ended up feeling good there and front anti-roll bar i usually start off with 21 uh, again um, you know i've reduced it a little bit down to 19 because i noticed there was a little bit of understeer from mid corner to the exit face um, because the anti-roll bar was a little too stiff so i've softened it by two clicks and it feels just nice so you don't want to play around too much with it as for the rear anti-roll bar still at 15 i i felt that's good enough uh helps the car to uh, you know change direction very quickly and keep the car stable in high speed corners especially in sector one right where all the 
fast left right lefts are so it keeps the car planted around there but if you go too high on it it may start to feel a little bit oversteery and a little bit too loose around the sector one s's and yeah that means you're going to lose lap time potentially and that's pretty much about it for the suspension i'm still not sure if this is 100 percent the fastest way uh, as we keep experimenting with you know the suspension a lot of time can be found in here it improves your car's handling and it can definitely improve your overall lap time if you are confident with the car now enough rambling about it and uh, we move on to the brakes 100 percent brake pressure and 56 brake bias to start off the lap you can use 57 brake bias for heavy braking like the final chicane and the hairpin that's the two most heaviest zones and you can also use 57 in the whole track once you have a little bit of tire wear to keep the car a bit more stable you can also use 55 54 or anything in between for high speed corners like spoon curve uh, the s section or even turn one uh, it's all about preference how you prefer the car to handle tire pressures no big secret here maximum on the tire pressures for the race and for qualifying you can actually reduce the tire pressures just a little bit to warm up your tires a bit quicker in japan sector one is the most important sector and you need to make sure your tires are warm enough to give you the maximum grip at sector one so you can drop the pressures about half psi or one full psi and that's it that's the setup around japan if you need lower down force go for it right but try it out and i'll leave you with the full speed hot lap to enjoy and i will see you in the next track guide and setup in a couple of days hope you enjoy this take care everyone stay safe and goodbye